Good evening, everybody. Joe from NDB Aviation, and tonight we're going to talk about the Honeycomb Aeronautical Alpha Yoke. Now, we're going to be talking about the base Alpha Yoke, not the XPC, which is about $100 different with a few additional features that make it a little bit sweeter, make it a little bit nicer for some people, depending on what you're looking for for your simulation needs. This video is going to talk about the Alpha Yoke one year later after a full year of use and abuse from not just myself, but my kids as well, when we've sat down and tried to use the Alpha for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, X-Plane 11, and 12 to teach my kids a little bit about aviation flying and for me to practice a few things while I was going through my type rating for the Airbus A320. Now, like I said, there are two versions of the Alpha Yoke, and let's kind of knock that out of the way before we get into this year review follow-up video that we're doing with this one. The main differences between the Alpha Base Yoke and the Alpha XPC Yoke are going to be this. It features a new front grille design, a full 180 degree yoke rotation with upgraded Hall Effect sensors to provide smooth precision with no center detent. The base includes a switch panel with master, alternator, avionics, and light switches, as well as a spring-loaded five-position ignition switch. That as well, including the Xbox functionality built into the XPC yoke itself. Now, that's a little bit to talk about, and for you as the end user, it's really going to come down, do you want to spend the extra $100 for the XPC, or go with the base Alpha yoke itself? The base alpha yoke is fine, and we're going to get into talking about the yoke now. So in this video, we're going to be cutting and pasting what I'm going to be doing from now on for any review. We're going to use the basic review template for even the follow-up videos as well. So it's going to talk about first, overall impressions, design, durability, functionality, value, and then my final thoughts about the unit itself. So going back and then thinking about where we are now. My overall impressions of the Alpha Yoke. The Alpha Yoke is a solid unit. I really like its overall design aspects. Everything about this yoke work out well. Impression wise, even coming down and setting up the simulator for myself or for one of my kids, if I'm choosing from the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro, my old Cessna yoke from SciTech all those years ago now, going on almost a decade, or the Alpha, I'm gonna set up the Alpha. And because of the overall impression I get from when I first look at it. Even my kids look at the Alpha Yoke and friends that I've shown it to and they've had a chance to try it out. They look at the Alpha and they see more of an aviation centric device here. If you've flown different aircraft, whether Cessna, whether a Piper, TBM, a Diamond, or something larger like an Airbus or a Boeing, you know, they all follow certain design cues. And the nice thing about the Alpha Yoke, and I've been told picking up the device during a review is really a no-no, but I want it in hand for this review. When you look at this device, it really embodies a lot of GA aspects and a little bit above as well. It ties in a lot of functionality as well that you want. But impression-wise, this is a solid built unit that you can get years of use out of and it mimics a lot of GA aviation and other aircraft very well. So design, let's jump right in. Design of this yoke is solid. The whole thing is built solidly with good plastic. You have mounting brackets on top that allows you to add in more functionality right here. There are other products that Honeycomb have that will stack on top of this. It also works with a few other things if you really wanna do it. The yoke design itself, while it is large and it does not perfectly mimic any worn device. It really does a good job at least giving you good handholds. Everything is ergonomic from where you, at least you can get to the trim wheels, whether it be your pitch trim or rudder trim or aileron trim, whichever you want to do, or reassign these to whatever one of the many buttons functions of your aircraft that you want to have. All the worn hat switch, even though it'd be nice to have maybe a secondary hat switch somewhere else here, it does work out well, it's easy, and all the buttons have good tactile feel. You can hear them, you can feel them every time you use them, and then the switches work out really nice. I've never had an issue with any of the switches, and the design of this overall unit is nice, with maybe two cons to me, just the, the design. There are two cons I have. Initially, it would have been nice if we would have gotten that spring-loaded ignition right here 
on the first unit and not the XPC. Is that worth a hundred dollars? If you're building a certified sim, maybe somebody that's designing and getting that approved from the FAA, that might be a feature that you would tie in because you're building in a full box suite of pieces that you sell to an end user where they unbox, set it up at home. And I think that would be a nice feature. If you're going for as much realism as possible, I think buying the XPC would be great. The other issue that I have with this yoke is to save cost having this cable here. It's not a big deal. It reminds me of a few other aspects of GA from the 80s and 90s where you had Velcro push to talk switches that were installed on aircraft because they didn't have them built into the yokes themselves. That reminds me of that aspect from GA. It's not a deal breaker, but it does kind of get annoying from time to time. Not a big issue. But those are my two cons for the design. Aside from that, the design is nice. It'd be cool if we had different lighting, maybe some actual RGB built into a future unit instead of red. Uh, the backside, I like how they went with the USB-C and then everything else design-wise works out nicely. Durability. I, like I said, I have not had any issues with the switches. No buttons have stuck. The rocker switches for the trims, there have been no issues with that. Even though I've reset them to be different functionality with an X-Plane 11 or 12 or Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, depending on what aircraft I want to fly and the profile I'm setting up, all of those switches have worked fine with no issues. I have had one durability issue and it was not the fault of my Alpha unit. It took some time though to figure out what was going on. So let me set up the uh, scenario here for you. I have my entire sim set up in my basement. My basement can get very dusty. I do have an air purifier down here to try to catch as much as possible, but unfortunately it doesn't catch everything. So about two, maybe three months ago, I came down to set up with the sim. I was sitting down my oldest child to get on the simulator and we were gonna be a Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 tracking down giraffes in a Piper Cub. We started up and I noticed that she kept turning a certain direction and the aircraft really wasn't flying right. And she got to the point where she could basically do some basic turns around a point. She could follow some livestock or creatures on the ground and keep them within view. But for some reason today, she was way off. She just couldn't keep things centered up. So I said, can I try, sweetheart? And she let me sit down and she was really sweet and patient with me as I sat here and I tried and I was having trouble. At that point, I really figured out that there was an issue here, and it was something either with my computer, the cable, or the alpha yoke itself. So at that point, we paused the sim, we shut the whole thing down, we went and we did something else. Later that night, I came back downstairs. I troubleshot the USB ports, I changed USB ports on my desktop, I even changed cables into the back of the Honeycomb Alpha. From there, I checked the connection in the back of the Honeycomb Alpha, make sure there wasn't any dust or anything else that built up there. And then when all that was said and done, I was troubleshooting in X-Plane 11. I had, we didn't have the, the X-Plane 12 beta yet. So it was X-Plane 11, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, and both sims were replicating about the same issue. So then I went into the Windows configurator for the, uh, uh, was it, uh, control panel, and I went into the game controller setup. And I went in there, looked at the X axes and the Y axes, and they were definitely off. I was not getting the full range of motion for the full box for roll and pitch. At that point, I wondered, was there something really wrong with the alpha? Now, it kind of dawned on me right about then, while sitting in my office and I was looking at one of the panels on the bottom of my desktop PC that's removable for dust and it was caked up. Now, given it's been a long time since so I've cleaned those, but it gave me an idea. Maybe, just maybe, I should do something like take a look at the buildup of dust right here along the yoke shaft itself. Well, I did that and I went and got myself a microfiber cloth and I started to wipe it off and I found there was a quite a bit of dust on there. I went ahead and got my air dusters I use on the computer, dusted out the unit as much as possible as I could. I can cont continued to clean off the yoke shaft itself as best as possible. And after a while, there were no fingerprints, no oils from fingerprints and no dust left on the stainless steel shaft of the alpha yoke. I went back into the game controllers, did multiple full range of motion, uh, turns, pitch, everything in there. And within about three of those cycles, everything was back to normal. So since then, I have had no other issues. 
it was most likely dust on the sensor. Now, is that an issue with the alpha yoke? I would say no. It just might be something as far as, depending on where you are, how you have your system set up. If you were in a dusty area with maybe a lot of dogs, cats, animals, children, whatever it might be, you might want to look into ways to care for getting dust off of the shaft of your alpha yoke. Aside from that though, I have had no issues with the durability of this product. Functionality wise, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, X-Plane 11 and 12, and Prepare 3D have custom baked in, or at least provided, uh, profiles for the Alpha Yoke and even the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Are these profiles perfect? No. I strongly recommend that you as the end user get in there and make sure that everything is set the way you want it, whether it's for these switches, all these switches, your ignition switches, and then all of these on top. You want to take the time to go in and verify these are what you expect them to be. And if they're not, you need to fix them because there might be different aircraft that you fly within the simulator that you want different functionality from your Alpha and then your Bravo or whatever else you're using. Take that time to get in there and get to know how to set that up. I've said this many times before, but I'm going to keep saying it again. The functionality of this unit, whether you buy an Alpha whether you buy an Alpha XP XPC or one of the Boeing yokes from Thrustmaster or even the Airbus joystick or anything else in between. The functionality of those devices are dependent on your ability to go in and verify that the profiles are what you as the end user want. So from there, I'm going to say functionality is perfect. There's nothing about this unit that I can really look at and compare to other products like my old Cessna yoke even the Boeing yoke from Thrustmaster and other yokes that are out there that I would probably change on this. Yeah, it would be cool to have a chronometer on the yoke itself, like the old, old SciTech yoke that's being sold by Logitech now, but that's not a big deal for me. There are chronometers in the Sims, and you might be able to use your iPad as well if you're actually a flight student and you're trying to time maybe an ILS approach or a localizer approach that you need to go by time and speed to know exactly where you are because there's no DME. So functionality, it's a great unit. Now value though, value whether it's the Alpha or Alpha XPC is gonna come down to again end user goals. If you are looking for budget, I would not say the Honeycomb Alpha yoke is a budget yoke because to me budget means $50. To me mid-range is $100 to $200 and you know maybe we can consider the alpha yoke a mid-range price peripheral because when we look at the boeing yoke and we look at all the other custom yokes you can buy from amazing places like precision flight controls and other companies out there that have small batch products the honeycomb aeronautical yoke is mid-range i would never say that this is a budget friendly device because if you're building the whole suite this is not budget friendly especially for a flight sim student that's looking to be, to maybe just go buy the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro or, sorry, just a flight student or even, even the basic simmer. If you are on a budget, you're going for something less than $100, probably closer to 50 if you can find it. This is a mid-range product. So value-wise, is this worth your money and investment as a uh, overall student of aviation? I think it is. You know, I think you'll get a lot of use out of this. It's gonna last you a long time, most likely a decade or more, I hope. And for the value of $250, even $350, this is gonna be something that is going to save you a lot of time where you can just jump in, get in your simulator, and go fly and practice things. So aside from that, I would say value-wise, it has a good value proposition. Final thoughts though. Is there anything about this yoke that would be a deal breaker to me. Honestly, no. If this broke today and I was gonna build a sim for myself again, I would go for this yoke. I don't know if I get the XPC unless for some reason I had an Xbox Series X and I don't see that happening anytime soon. So most likely I would build my flight sim again around an Alpha and a Bravo and then what other, whatever other kind of rudder pedals I can find at the time. The Charlies are gonna be great. I'd love to get a pair of Charlie rudder pedals to review or at least build up with. But I also kind of like the way the Turtle Beach uh, rudder pedals look. However, I do think that they're really expensive for what they are. But 
As for my year review on the Alpha Yoke, what I'm thinking of it, I think it's a great product. And if it's something you can afford and you want, buy this, build a sim around it. You will not regret that purchase. Joe from NDB Aviation, thank you all for your time. If you liked the video, like and subscribe. If you didn't, tell me what I can do better. So thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy out there, and see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.